Now we're going to discuss in further detail your altimeter. And things to note about your altimeter, first of all, is there are three needles. And the short fat needle is used to define tens of thousands of feet. So for example, in this picture, the uh, needle is halfway between zero and 10,000. So it indicates that you'd be roughly at 5,000 feet. The second needle indicates thousands of feet, and it's showing that you're at 5,000 feet. And then the longest skinny needle reads hundreds of feet. So we have ten thousands, thousands, and hundreds. So in this example, it's just showing that you are at 5,000 feet. Now, in your initial training, it's rare that we go above 10,000 feet, so normally you probably won't even notice the little short fat needle reading tens of thousands of feet. Uh, the next thing is the Colesman window. In the Colesman window is where we place the current altimeter setting. So for example, if you listen to the ASOS on the field and it said that the altimeter was 3012, then you use the little knob to adjust and put that altimeter setting in there. What you're actually doing is you're setting the needles so they read in relation to mean sea level. In this example, the, uh, the airport field elevation is 1,048 feet, so the one needle would be on the 1,000, and then the taller skinny needle would be on about 48 feet. If you do not have the altimeter setting at your airport, then you should simply just set in the field elevation until while you're flying you can obtain a local altimeter setting from either ATC or a local airport. But what you're doing, again, is you're setting the Colesman window so the altimeter reads field elevation. The tolerance on your altimeter is 75 feet plus or minus the field elevation. So when you do set in the current pressure, make sure that you take a quick mental note on what the needle's indicating and make sure that it's somewhere pretty close to the field elevation. The next thing is we need to look at the different types of altitudes. So our different types of altitudes are indicated, Uh, true altitude, absolute altitude, pressure altitude, and density altitude. Indicated altitude is just what's read on the dial, whether it's right or wrong. And the reason why I say whether it's right or wrong is because perhaps you don't have the current setting in there or your altimeter is malfunctioning. But indicated is just simply read off the dial. Your true altitude is how high you truly are above the ocean. So for example, if this were the ocean, and here's the, the uh, land, and the field elevation were 1048, and you're flying above the airport indicating 4,000 feet, then your true altitude would be 4,000 feet. That's how high you are above the ocean. Your absolute altitude is above the ground. It's AGL. So your absolute altitude would be about 3,000 feet in this example. So true altitude is MSL, and absolute altitude is AGL. It's easier to remember that one because they both start with A. The next two are pressure altitude and density altitude. And they're a little difficult to wrap your brain around, but pressure altitude is your altitude corrected for non-standard pressure. It's explaining how will your airplane perform because today's pressure is either a high pressure where air is thick and your airplane thinks it's down lower than normal, or it's a low pressure, meaning the air is thin, and your airplane thinks it's higher than normal. So pressure altitude is the altitude corrected for non-standard pressure. Density altitude takes the pressure altitude, which has been corrected for the pressure, and in addition to that, corrects it for temperature. So we could say the definition of density altitude is, the alt is pressure altitude corrected for non-standard temperature. That way we're correcting both the pressure and the temperature problem.